News 5 at 6 is brought to you by Mr. Hero. Right now, get a value Snackers meal for only $4. News 5 on your side starts now. Now at 6, a story you'll only see on News 5. Sworn to protect the community. An officer with CMHA accused of taking advantage of children he was mentoring. He was saying that he thought she was his one family says the officer started making moves toward her just days after he arrested her. He got my kids in my car with a gun. He been threatening me and my kids and my family life all week. Also, only on News 5, two kids at the center of an Amber Alert issued this morning are home safe tonight. The man behind it reached out to his mother during the whole ordeal. I want to say that I love you. They have some words back and forth. And it came to this one, it shouldn't have. Breaking at this hour, Willoughby police say they are still searching for that man, Clarence Davis, after pointing a gun at his ex-girlfriend and taking off with her two children. Now, those kids are home safe tonight after a statewide Amber Alert was issued. News 5's Megan Hickey has been on this story all day long. Megan, what is the latest now? There are still plenty of questions tonight, starting with where did Clarence Davis take those children for five hours? And police tell me they still have questions too. Willoughby Hills police tell me they believe the children may have been taken to the area of 75th Street and St. Clair in Cleveland. They were recovered after family members made contact with 24 year old Clarence Davis, who dropped them off but did not turn himself in. Investigators tell me that he threatened his live in girlfriend, Samika Trailer. I'm outside, but I need to go inside. I mean, I'm scared. Then drove off with her five year old son and three year old daughter in the car. We were there when Raven Briscoe was reunited with her father at the police station. <laughs> police tell me they're still searching for Davis. Clarence Davis is on the loose and uh, we're still looking for him. Uh, he is said to be driving the blue uh, Hyundai, 2013 Hyundai, and supposedly has a handgun in his possession. Now, police tell me Davis could face domestic violence, kidnapping, and improper use of a vehicle charges. Live in Willoughby Hills, Megan Hickey, News 5. And also only on News 5 tonight, Davis's mother is pleading with her son to turn himself in as she shared with us the chilling phone call he made to her while he had the kids. Aretha Davis says the conversation started with Clarence telling her that he loves her repeatedly as she tried to calm him down. He said he was going to go away for a long time. Clarence, I want to say that I love you. Aretha Davis tells us that her son and the mother of the children he took have been dating on and off for around three years. They just moved into another place and then they finna start a family and um, they have some words back and forth and it came to this when it shouldn't have. Aretha Davis says her son does carry a weapon because of his job, but says she does not believe he intends to harm anyone or jeopardize his job. Have you seen this girl? Cleveland police are trying to find Summer Young, a 12 year old who they say went missing late Sunday night. According to investigators, her mother noticed she wasn't home around 830, but figured she would be back soon. But the girl's brother told police she told him she'd be back. Well, they got into a, she got into a white Cadillac with two girls. So if you have any information about this, please call Cleveland police. He is a local police officer facing charges that he has abused five teens that he was supposed to be protecting. And now more parents are starting to come forward, telling us their daughter is one of Christopher Collins's victims, and they broke this case wide open. News 5's Kristen Volk spoke ex exclusively with those parents who say they are glad they caught this when they did. For the past three years, Christopher Collins has worked for the Cuyahoga Metropolitan Housing Authority Police Department as an officer and as an advisor for the department's teen mentoring program. It was within that program where police say he took advantage of the underage participants. Now these parents tell me and our sources close to this investigation confirm that this was not the only way he preyed on kids. Hiding their identity. Should not no grown person be talking to no little 15 year old little girl like that at all period. To protect their child. It was over three months of text messages in that phone alone. That was just one of her phones. They say they had no idea. 
constantly checking on her, what you doing? No idea that a CMHA police officer had actually been pursuing their 15-year-old daughter. Call her while he had do off-duty work at bars. For nearly a year, they say that man is right here, 26-year-old Christopher Collins. She got a friend request from him on Facebook and accepted it. That friend request came from Collins last April, just weeks after he arrested her for getting into a fight. Only time I see her and him is when he arrested her. You know, other than that, I never see, he never came back to my house or nothing like that to visit. No visits, no reason to raise suspicion until 10 months later when mom saw a text message. A message popped up from Christopher Collins asking, was she busy? And that's when I got to check out all her messages. And that led these parents to find more and more of them. I was highly upset myself. Talking about little boys. Penises. An infinite number of messages on her phone, her Facebook account, and logs of video chats. He was saying that he thought she was his first love. That was in January when she tells me she first caught Collins, first saw that initial text message pop up in the middle of the night. And in the wee hours of the morning, she and her husband raced over to CMHA police armed with evidence. Once they seen the messages, they were surprised they said. That's when the investigation started and the news got worse. There were visits, just not at home. He went to her junior high school as well as her high school. Their pain, their anger only cut deeper. They say CMHA police discovered Collins had been visiting the teen at school during school hours, using the power of his badge to pull her out of class and give her gifts. They don't allow like any other uncles and things like that. They weren't allowed to come up there. But if a police officer come up there and let him come in, we still need to notify the parents. I'm glad I caught him when I did. Six weeks later, Collins is indicted for crimes connected to his alleged relationship with this couple's daughter. He is also indicted, accused of multiple sex offenses involving four teens he mentored in the CMHA Police Explorers program a program designed to teach teens about careers in law enforcement. Collins has pleaded not guilty to all charges. We tried to contact him but could not, and we got no response from the school district where the alleged victim attends. In the studio, I'm Kristen Volk, News 5. New at 6 tonight, Canton police say they've arrested a man believed to be behind a double shooting last week. Samuel Betts has been charged with Complicity to commit murder, among other charges, in the death of Jermaine Davis II and the wounding of Jordan Davis. The pair were shot on Arlington Avenue Northwest last Monday. Investigators say there could be more arrests coming. Brianna Cook, the babysitter of a one-year-old girl found sitting alone on the porch of a vacant home, was in court facing charges today. She's facing falsification charges after telling police she found the child when she was supposed to be babysitting her to begin with. She's scheduled to be in court again later this month. There's a new crime trend on the rise in Greater Cleveland that has gun shop owners on high alert tonight after another store was the target of an overnight smash and grab attempt. The thieves used a stolen Jeep and a chain to rip the front door of the shop right out. They didn't get their hands on any firearms, but they were able to take off with magazines. Police are asking if you have any information about this latest break in to give investigators a call. Still ahead on News 5 at 6, a prison worker just quit her job after investigators found more than $10,000 worth of meth in her home. Plus, Governor Kasich is about to lay out his last state of the state address in Sandusky. We'll have a look at what he could say tonight. All right, we're tracking our next weather maker, Kansas, Oklahoma. Starts off as rain moving in to our area tomorrow night and eventually changes over to this. We are tracking snow for you. Coming up. And now we have breaking details on a story that's been unfolding throughout the day. A prison worker at a state facility in Lorraine has just resigned. She's facing multiple drug charges after a large amount of crystal meth was found inside her Akron home. Bob Jones has new details only on News 5. And Bob, any concern that the suspect brought drugs into the prison? 
Well, Danita, we wonder that too, but a spokesperson for Lorraine Correctional says there's no evidence that she brought drugs into the prison. Still, Akron police here tell me what they uncovered was very concerning, especially given what her job was. It's kind of surprising. I would think she would know uh, the, the laws and what happens when she gets caught with this, what's going to happen to her. The reaction along Akron's Garmin Road after learning what police found in a prison worker's home over the weekend. Crystal meth, a lot of it, weighing about two pounds with a street value around $10,000. I'm a little surprised. It's a pretty quiet neighborhood. Until her resignation, just hours ago, Darice Clay worked at Lorraine Correctional Institution, first as a correctional officer and most recently as a classification specialist, meaning she helped place prisoners into various facilities. But now she's out of a job, facing felony, drug abuse, and trafficking charges. Police found the crystal meth after a tip led them to her home. She was booked into the Summit County Jail and posted bond. We knocked on her door, but a person who peeked through a curtain wasn't interested in talking. Hi, I was trying to see if Jerese Clay is home. Bye. This is two pounds of uh, crystal meth that's in our community. And it could be, you know, who knows how far out that this could get. Adding to the concern, police say Clay's three-year-old son was in the house where the drugs were discovered. And for that, she's charged with child endangering. It's kind of disheartening to know that somebody in the law enforcement field would be doing something like this. Tonight, neighbors see a disturbing irony if Clay is found guilty on the drug charges. That she's going to wind up in the, in the prison that she's guarding, with the prisoners that she's guarding. And this afternoon, I checked in once again with the state officials to find out if there could be an investigation into whether she brought drugs into the prison in Lorraine. They said there is no evidence, there is no investigation. Her son tonight is in the care of Summit County Children's Services. Live in Akron tonight, Bob Jones, News 5. The days of the classified pages in the paper are over, as many rely on social media and the Internet to buy and sell stuff. Police departments across the region are providing safe zones for these transactions to happen. But as News 5's Tracy Carlos reports, one department is taking it one step further. Here at the Sagamore Hills Police Department, they have gone high tech with a camera focused on safety. More than a dozen cameras aimed at the door, the garage, and now here on these two parking spots outside of the Sagamore Hills Police Department. These two spots designated as e-commerce safety zones, a safe place for people to buy or sell items that they found on websites or social media. But Sagamore Hills Police took it one step further with a state-of-the-art camera and DVR. You never know who's posting on, on the social media sites. It's, it's not a face-to-face -face encounter. You're, you're talking to a computer, so you really aren't sure who's going to show up. The safety zone is also used for child custody exchanges, and police here told me that it is used quite often. In Sagamore Hills, Tracy Carlos, News 5. Today, a new law takes effect that aims to protect people from repeat drunk drivers. Annie's law will ramp up the use of ignition locking systems in the hopes of preventing drunk driving crashes and deaths. Now, this system is a breathalyzer. It won't allow a driver to start a car if they're over the limit. First-time offenders who agree to the system can have their license suspension reduced from 12 months down to six. Annie's law is named for Annie Rooney, who was hit and killed by a repeat DUI offender in 2013. Crowds beginning to gather at this hour in Sandusky as the state legislature assembles for this year's State of the State address. Governor John Kasich keeping with his tradition of taking this speech on the road. News 5's John Kosick joins us now. And John, the governor's expected to preach fiscal responsibility. Yeah, Rob, the budget currently in the hands of the legislature is a lean one. The state has a $2 billion rainy day fund, which Kasich said he intends to leave to his successor so he won't dip into it. This is the sixth year Kasich has taken his state of the state on the road. The only other Northeast Ohio stop was Medina in 2014. Members of the cabinet today held meetings in the community of Sandusky. The state of the state is normally at the end of February, but Casey told me he pushed it to April this year so that the weather at least had a shot at being better. So legislators from around the state could maybe see what he saw as a kid from Pennsylvania visiting the region for the first time. I love going up to Sandusky. It's just a stone's throw away from Vermilion, where as a kid I used to go up and with my mother and father and and uh, our family and, and my aunt and my uncle, a lot of good memories when I first really learned how much I loved Ohio. This will be Kasich's second to last state of the state. It gets underway tonight at 7. John Kasich, News 5. Thank you, John. Mm -hmm.
Hi. Yeah. Hi, Mark. How are you doing? Are you loving this weather, are you? <laughs> oh, we're just jumping for joy. Yeah. Not the uh, first word that came to my mind right <laughs> there. But the governor is near Cedar Point. They have a lot of roller coasters there. Kind of like our weather. Kind of like our a weather. A roller coaster. Mm -hmm. So we're going to go up tomorrow, down by Friday, and then back up toward opening day. I like that. All right, so let's show you what's going on. A live picture from Cleveland. Mainly cloudy skies everywhere you go now across northern Ohio. The rainfall has been sparse. A sprinkle at two earlier this morning, and I'm not really seeing anything on radar. So I think we stay dry. 52 in Cleveland now, 57 in Akron, middle 50s for Worcester, and 53 in Mansfield. We still have the 50s, even some lower 60s everywhere. We've got 60 in Dover, New Philly, 61 Millersburg. Cool spot though, Mentor has dropped to 48. They're getting a little lake breeze. Now the winds are still gusty. These are current wind gusts. Worcester, a wind gust of 37 miles per hour. 30 mile an hour wind gusts in Cleveland, 33 in Ashtabula. It is just going to be blustery for the next few hours. High winds. We've got a wind advisory for Cuyahoga County, Lake County, and the northern sliver of Ashtabula County, north of Interstate 90 until 10 p.m. The wind's coming in off the lake. Again, highest near the Lake Erie shoreline, but everybody's enjoying or experiencing the gusty winds across northern Ohio. Clouds for the most part, have been pretty persistent all day. We may get a little clearing coming our way after midnight tonight. We can hope for that. Notice our wind gusts do begin to calm down. They'll still be blustery through the overnight at 10 to 20 miles per hour. We're in between systems. Here's the low. First low going away. We've got a little wraparound cool air behind that. And then the second system, which is going to bring a variety of weather to the area beginning late tomorrow. So here's the system. We'll start off with rain, maybe even a little thunder tomorrow night through on and off through the day Thursday. Then as the low goes by, slows down into western New York. We've got some wraparound cold air behind this one. This one's a little stronger as far as the wraparound cold. So yeah, that is snow and we'll be seeing some of that here. So let's put a timing on it. A little front coming through tonight. Then we get a little bit of sun tomorrow. Here's the rain coming in by 1.15 a.m. Thursday. And then the low pulls overhead as we move through Thursday night. Thursday night, coldest air begins to invade. We're talking lower 30s. Friday, it's going to be a chilly day all day long as we continue to watch some scattered snow moving in. Here's the rain coming in. There's rain. This is 1230 Thursday. So scattered showers in the 50s. And then there's the wraparound cold. And this is 515 a.m. Friday morning. And that is legitimate snowfall. Now remember, the ground is still warm. We've had some warm days, so the pavement's warm, the concrete, the asphalt. So a lot of this snow is going to melt as it hits. But again, it's going to be falling during the Friday morning rush, and there could easily be a slushy one, two, three inches of snow by the end of the day on Friday across the entire area. 41 degrees tonight, mostly cloudy, blustery, and cool. Tomorrow we'll try and get you up to near 60, a little morning sun, but then clouds thicken during the afternoon. Rain arrives after dark tomorrow night. Here we go, 40 tonight for Akron. Tomorrow, 64, mainly cloudy, still breezy. Thursday, it's rain likely, mid 50s. There you go, 30s into the lower and middle 40s. Friday with scattered snow, Saturday dry. And then forget about snow for the weekend, dry 50s Saturday. Sunday, I'm thinking 70s. And then Tuesday, fingers are crossed for opening day, 60s. We'll try and keep the rain away during the ball game. See that? Like I he's got some good. kind of Fingers power. Crossed. He's like, I'm going to try to keep the rain away. <laughs> he's These got, aren't the drawings the, you're looking for. <laughs> He's got the power the five. Away. He's got the power five. He does. Yeah. Uh, all right. So uh, the Indians just ramping up, getting going here. The Cavs. Only 161 to, to go. I know, but you know, and the Cavs are heading six. toward the playoffs. Six. Relax. Kyle Korver back tonight. That's, That's good, good news. news. And they've got six games to go. We're going to talk about that when we come back. And the Indians. Boy, they picked up right where they left off last season, didn't they? We're going to talk about fighting till the end when we come back. Well, the Cavs are back home tonight against Orlando. Then it's off to Boston where they'll play the top seed in the East. The Celtics seems kind of weird. Today, Ty Lu said that everyone will be eligible to play tomorrow night. He's not resting anybody. It's been an interesting few days for the Cavs after that overtime win against Indy. An argument between Tristan Thompson and LeBron. Ty Lu just telling the guys to take the day off and then meet at the queue today. Hopefully, they've got their engines revving for the Magic, who they beat 16 straight times. 
The Indians are back at it again tonight in Texas after a come from behind win, a come from behind win over the Rangers last night. Plenty of big plays from guys who didn't start the season for the Tribe last year. Names like Miller, Almonte, Diaz, Logan, and of course that home run you just saw that tied the game at five in Carnacion. I mean, I don't think I was really surprised that, I think we were all a little bit surprised when he kind of fell into our lap because it made it sound like it, we weren't going to play in that kind of stratosphere. And, you know, fortunately, I think, you know, the combination of our playoff run and, you know, the, the fact that, you know, there was a glut of first base, we, you know, he, he fell into our laps and, you know, we're excited to have him. This week's McDonald's Student Athlete of the Week, very accomplished sophomore from Shaker Heights, Lyle Yost, already has traveled the world as one of the country's top divers. I have been junior nationals since I was 10 years old. I've been to Cuba for the junior Pan American Games. This year in high school diving, I won the state championship. Now I'm going to go to Germany for the youth diving invitation. So far, I'm, I've been on the honor roll. Uh, all of high school so far. Straight A's, honors and AP classes. I want to keep going with high school diving, maybe get uh, state championships the next two years, and maybe aim for the state record. I also want to get a little bit more international experience. You know, Olympics is a stretch goal, but it's sort of always in the back of your mind if you're thinking about it. The biggest part for me is just to have fun. If, if as long as I'm still having fun with it, that's when I'm at my best. Gotta have awesome. fun. Yeah, very good. News 5 at 6 has been brought to you by the Ohio Lottery Cash Explosion Game, Saturdays at 7.30.